Hey Curio friends, today I am guiding you through how to do our really awesome Party Llama DIY kit. So make sure you get it opened up, get yourself some water and a paper towel, and I'll guide you through all the directions to make an awesome painting. Once you get everything opened up, the first thing we're gonna start with is actually our lightest color first, which is white. We're gonna use our round brush and we're gonna hold it up here in the kind of shiny metallic part. And we are going to paint our llama in white. You might be thinking that that's kind of weird because your canvas is already white, but if we don't paint this in white, your canvas will stay kind of flat looking and the rest of the areas that you painted will have a shine to it because of the paint. So it's really important for us to be able to still put paint in areas that are white instead of it just being bare, empty canvas. I'm going to start up with the ears first, and you'll notice that my image looks a little bit different. I'm working on paper today because I like to save the canvases for all of you. So I work on paper so I can hold on to the example easier, and I make sure to give you guys the canvases. So we're gonna be starting with our white, and I love to outline things first, meaning that I kind of, I take my brush and I go right beside where that color is ending, and then I can paint inside of that outline without kind of worrying about going over top of the lines and going outside of the area that I want to stay white, or whatever color you're using. So our Llama is gonna be the super coolest llama at the party. Really awesome shades, party hat. We're gonna give it some fun colors and really bring it to life. Super excited to do this DIY kit with you. I think it's a fun one for sure. It can stay out year round, which is awesome. If this part is tricky for you, you can always have a family member help you. You'll notice that as I'm working, I constantly turn my picture so that I can work at it while it's close to me instead of further away. So one thing I'm gonna do with these little pieces right here that kind of come out as the fur is I'm gonna take my round brush and I'm gonna go in to the pointed area first and then pull my paintbrush back out. That helps so that when I'm painting, it helps to give it a really nice crisp point still without going way outside of the area that I wanted to hold on to the paint with. And it'll be easier to see once we kind of paint the background of what that looks like. But we, we sometimes start with the background first in a painting, or you can sometimes start with the lightest color. Today I chose to do the lightest color first. Um, I like to do that sometimes because it's a little bit more forgiving. Like this is the white, it's kind of the easiest color to paint over. So kind of practicing and warming up with that lightest color first. And then as we keep going and we've kind of practiced a little bit more, we can kind of fine tune what we're painting and get a little bit more used to it so we can do a better job of having control over our paintbrush. All right, so I am painting my llama all white first. And like I said, that's because we wanna make sure that it looks like a finished painting when it's done. We don't wanna hang it up and it just looks like you forgot to paint the areas that are white. We want it to look totally finished. If you have any larger brushes, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm using a round brush right now, but you can also use a square brush. It looks square at the top. And you wanna find that balance between not putting a teeny tiny bit of paint on, but then also not putting such big globs that you have these big giant thick areas of paint too. So it's kind of a balance between both sides there. When you get down to the bottom by your llama's neck, make sure that on your canvas you paint the sides too, because then when you hang it up, it looks nice and finished off. All right, that's the only areas I'm gonna do white for right now. I'm gonna wash off my brush, dry it really good so that you don't have a goopy picture. And you have similar colors to what I have right here in your kit. They could be a tiny bit different, tiny shade different, but 
This is how I'm asking you to work on the project if you wanna follow me exactly, but you should have enough of each color that if you wanna do something a little bit different, you're more than welcome to. And you can see the finished picture at the end. So if there's something you wanna fast forward to to see and you wanna switch it around, you can. For example, I'm gonna do the background blue. If you really, really, really wanted to do the background purple, you could do something like that instead. So we can kind of switch around some of the colors if you want to. After all, you are the artist, not me. But since I'm giving you a guided painting, kind of showing you what to do step by step, this is kind of what I would stick with. It's a good image, looks good. All the colors work well together but you're more than welcome to kind of do you, that's important. That's really what art's all about, is expressing yourself and the things that you like. Okay, when I was talking about doing the white, I was talking about starting up here at the point and pulling the paintbrush down towards you. That helps to make sure that that little point stays tiny. So what we're doing is we're giving it the look that it has some kind of fur that's sticking out. You're helping the person looking at your picture to see that there is texture. If we just had this perfectly smooth, it wouldn't look like he's kind of cozy or fluffy and has like a warm coat to him of fur. And we wanna make sure we have that, that's important. So like I said before, I'm still outlining everything. It helps to make sure that I know where I'm stopping so that when I go to paint the other areas, I kind of already did the hard work already. And if this is too difficult for you because you're a new painter, you can always ask somebody else to help you outline and then you paint in the rest. But it's a great way to practice control over your brush. And this kind of helps us know where our guidelines are of where we stop painting. And when you do your background, you really wanna make sure that you paint the sides and the top and bottom of your canvas. So when you paint the entire background, like we're gonna to start to do in a minute, make sure that you wrap it all around the sides and you do the rest of it also. So now that we outlined everything, this part's kind of easy. You kind of have this ability to be able to paint without worrying so much about covering over an area that you don't want to. And if at any point, if I'm going too fast for you, you can always pause it. You can always work on it and come back to it another day. You don't have to do it all at once. And you can kind of play around with the way that you're painting it. Some people like to paint all in one direction. Some people like to paint kind of choppy and kind of do these X's like this on their picture. You can paint this totally solid blue. Or if you want to, you could start to add in a little bit of white. While my blue paint is still wet, if I take some white and I toss some white in, it gives it this kind of dimension. It makes it look a little bit more interesting to look at. It's not something you have to do, but I'm kind of taking my white and I'm just kind of making X's over top of it and kind of adding in some of this area that just is a little bit more interesting to look at. So there's lots of different things you can do depending on what you like and what you don't like. There's different things you can do depending on how much experience you've had with painting. Someone that's a new painter might not be ready for that yet, but somebody that's maybe taken some art classes with us or you paint a lot at home, that might be something that you wanna try. Like I said, I'm a constant turner of my paper. I always like to work really close to myself. So I constantly turn my paper, canvas, wood, whatever I'm painting on, I like to turn it a lot so it's always close to me. Even if I'm coloring like in a coloring book, I always do that too. It's just kind of easier. All right, so since this blue is still wet, I'm still gonna go ahead and kind of toss in that white. And I've been painting for a while, so if I'm going way too fast for you, don't hesitate to pause it. And you don't have to do this. 
You could also do it with another color. If you decided that you wanted to do your background purple, you could still toss white in there and it would have the same effect. White is a lightener. So anytime you add white to something, it makes it lighter. So later on, when we make our glasses pink, we'll actually make it by adding our white to it. I like to paint in a style that's very kind of painterly. I like it to look choppy. I like people to be able to see my brush strokes. I think that's something that can be fun that makes your picture look different than like taking a photograph, especially now so many people are able to take lots and lots of pictures right on your phone that sometimes we think that when we make artwork, it doesn't look nice unless it's perfect. But Really, if we want something to look perfect and we want to capture something exactly the way it is, we can take a photograph of it because it's super easy to do that now with everybody having cameras. But when you're painting something, it's okay to have it look different or to be able to see your brush strokes. That's something that kind of makes it exciting. So I like to do really choppy paintings, but again, that's me and you're different than I am. We are not the same person. So if you aren't feeling it and you don't really like how this looks, you want yours to be very smooth and you want it to be just the light blue and no white added to it, your picture is still awesome and amazing because that's the choices you made to make it the way you want it to be. Sometimes when you're painting kind of choppy, some people leave really big thick globs of paint on there and try to make sure you thin those out. So make sure that you're kind of checking that instead of dipping into here for more paint, if there's areas that have a lot of paint that are really thick, you can actually use that instead of dipping back onto your palette. All right, this is looking like one awesome party llama. So I'm gonna wash out my brush, give it a little dry off here, make sure that I'm ready for the next step. Um, I think I'm gonna do the party hat next. So whenever I'm working on my party hat, I'm gonna flip this around so that it's close to me. I'm gonna do my party hat purple, starting at the top with my round brush so I can make sure I get into that point. Make sure you take your brush, get into that little pointed area. And I'm gonna make mine look like it has some polka dots, but I'm not gonna worry about those polka dots yet. I'll get there a little bit later. And you're more than welcome to wait until your background dries. I'm kind of doing everything all at once, but you could either wait to let it dry and come back to it. You could ask a family member if they could use a hair dryer on it, because it's easier to be able to put your hands down while you're painting. You can't really put your hands down if it's still wet, so. Well, since I have purple on my paintbrush, I'm going to start a little bit of the background and I'm gonna make it look like there's some confetti falling. And you don't have to do this. You could make polka dots, you could make swirls, you could do different stuff in the background, but I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna give this just a kind of a little swoop, kind of here and there, just like a little, not quite a U shape, just a little like wisp of my brush. And I'm gonna do it all over in different spots. Confetti goes everywhere. So it doesn't have to be like, there's exactly seven over here and six over here and four there. Like I just kind of am spacing it out in the background so it looks like it's falling. And I just thought I'd do that now while it was on my paintbrush. I'm gonna cruise over onto the kind of mouth area next. You can do a couple of different things with this. If you want to, you can just use the straight up kind of lighter beigey color in there. If you want it to be a little bit darker, you could add a little bit of purple to it. Let me see. And you have a palette for mixing. You're more than welcome to mix. 
Sometimes mixing can be awesome and you have great colors that you mix. Sometimes you can get a little too heavy handed and it's a little too dark. So you should be able to see on my palette, the purple just kind of made this a little bit darker. So depending on the color that you kind of want the mouth area, you can either use that color straight from the container or you can mix a little bit of purple into it and make it a little bit darker. I made mine just a tiny, tiny bit darker. And this is the area where he obviously smiles and shows those fabulous teeth. Eats all those yummy foods that llamas eat. And we'll put some detail back in there a little bit later once we do some black. So kind of paint that part, nice. Cruising right along here, it's gonna look so good. Um, like I said before, I'm going to do my glasses pink, but if you wanna do them red, you can. If you wanna to mix together your purple and your blue and make kind of a darker purpley blue, you could do those. I'm going to make pink, so I'm gonna get my red and put it in a little spot over here. We just learned that white is a lightener, so I'm gonna take some of this white and I'm gonna add it into my red to make it lighter and more pink. The more white I add, the more pink it'll become. So if I take just this little bit of red, I'm gonna even wash my brush off. Oh, that was not a good job of washing my brush off. If you go to dry your brush and you still see all this color, that means you missed some while you were rinsing, so make sure that when you rinse your brush off, it should be pretty close to clear. So if I take a lot of white and mix it with just this little bit of red, it'll be a much lighter pink color. Let's see, I'm gonna add in a little bit of purple just to see what happens. Hmm. Uh, I don't think I like that. I'm gonna stick with my kind of pinkishy red color over here. I'm gonna add just a little bit more white to this. A little bit more, a little bit more. It's growing, it's getting bigger. I keep adding a lot of white. Maybe I do like that color. Hmm. Lots of different options whenever you're mixing colors. Lots of cool things can happen. All right, I'm gonna paint these fabulous sunglasses. This is a little tricky because you kind of don't need to outline. If you're using your round brush, you can kind of do one swoop around them and it's almost the same thickness as your glasses. I guess this llama's partying outdoors. Sunglasses on, blue sky in the background. Summer birthdays are tons of fun. Lots of things to be able to do outside for them. All right. Mixed up that pinkish color. You can mix any color you want for in there. You could do them straight red. You could even have done them yellow if you wanted to. Um, since we're still working with the red, I'm gonna take some of that and I'm gonna add more confetti to the background. And I'm just gonna do it the exact same way I did before. Just these little pieces that are kind of falling. And instead of just a polka dot, I am trying to give them like a little swoop. That one didn't turn out the same as the others, but I'm sure every piece of confetti isn't exactly the same. And that's okay. Okay, now that our, now that our hat's a little bit more dry, or you could always dry it, I'm gonna add some polka dots to it. You can do polka dots with the back of your paintbrush. Depending on like how big your paintbrush is, there's different polka dot sizes. So I could do it smaller, like the back of my paintbrush. If you have a Q-tip at home, you could use a Q-tip. I could always make these polka dots a little bit bigger by still using the back of my brush. And instead of just stamping it and lifting back up, if I kind of stamp this and draw a circle, 
I can actually still kind of draw and paint just a little bit with my paintbrush. It'll help to give me that polka dot look, even though I'm just using the back. You can add as many polka dots as you want to, or you could decide that you want your hat to be striped. It's totally up to you, it's your hat. I'm gonna add some little polka dots in between, I think too, just to make it extra polka dotty and fun. Yeah. Since I'm using white, I'm gonna go for it and do some more confetti. Lots of confetti, this is a really fun party. And it should be happening outside because then we don't have to pick up the confetti from inside. <laughs> I'm gonna add a little fun like pom-pom to the top of my hat. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush and almost like stamp it a little bit as it's kind of laying down. So I'm gonna hold my brush kind of flat kind of put it down and give it a little wiggle and pick it back up. If I keep doing that and kind of turn my canvas, it's gonna kind of look like a little bit of a star or kind of a little pom-pom shape at the top. Just make it look a little bit more festive and fun at the top. And you don't have to do this with white, you could do it with a color if you want. I think before I do my black, um, I am gonna add in a little bit of the yellow for the confetti in the back, if you have yellow with your kit there. If you have different colors at home, you could always do any color you want to. Or like I said, at any point, you could flip the colors around and use them differently than I showed you today. Sometimes yellow, on a background with blue like that can look a little bit greenish, so that's normal if yours looks a little green. And now we're gonna outline him. He's still a little like lacking, so we're gonna outline him, make him really pop. Make sure your picture's really dry before you outline so that you can put your hand down because it'll help you be able to have more control. So we know that black is our darkest color, kind of be the most careful with it because it likes to take over. So I'm gonna paint in these shades. First, I'm trying to work from the inside out because that gives me the opportunity to be able to rest my hand down. If I started with the outside and then I tried to paint on the inside, it would be really tricky. And I'd probably smear it. So as we start to outline, if this is really difficult for you, you could always wait until it's completely dry. Not with a hair dryer, like you would have to wait to do it overnight. But if this is a little too tough, you could always use a Sharpie, but you wanna make sure that it's super, super, super dry. So that's why you would wanna actually wait until like the next day. Because a hair dryer will kind of dry the top layer, but it won't dry all of it. Kind of put his mouth back in there, the pencil lines that were there. Do these couple areas. I'm gonna turn this again so I don't accidentally smear my glasses. I'm gonna outline almost everything. I'm a big outliner. I like how stuff looks outlined. I think it really kind of, it adds like a fun cartoon look to it, but it helps to pop it off of the canvas so that like if you're looking at it from across the room you're like boom yes you can tell exactly what that is because it's outlined you 
You can outline the hat. You could outline the glasses. I'm gonna leave those couple things, but I definitely wanna outline the fur. And I'm gonna start down here because like we talked about, you wanna start on the inside to maintain that crisp triangle. And now I'm gonna finish up this. Sometimes when you're outlining, you can be nervous and your line can look kind of shaky. The more confident you can be when you're putting your line down, the better it'll look. And it's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay if it's a little thicker in some spots and thinner than others. I'm gonna give them some little tufts of hair or her. Just make it look like if we touched our llama and petted it, it has like a softness to it. Just kind of doing a few lines just to show that it has a texture. If there's any other spots you wanna outline, you can, or you could always do something that's kind of like a half outline. Like I could do something like this where, you know, I just do like a little bit of the shades. I don't have to do all of it, just some. Sometimes people do that. It just adds a little bit of depth to it without having to commit to the entire thing. And we have one more step before our awesome party llama is complete. We want to make these look like they're actual glasses. So we wanna add the shine or like the highlight into it. So what we're gonna do next is with our white, our last step, and you wanna make sure your glasses are really nice and dry. Your last step is to do these kind of little slash to make it look like there's a reflection and to make it look like the light's shining off of them and you're getting that glare and that kind of shine coming back to it. So there's our awesome party llama. I hope you had as much fun painting it as I did. I'd love to see what yours looks like and how you decided to make it your own. So when you're done, be sure to snap a picture of it, post it, tag us on Facebook and Instagram at Curio Cool, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be up to date on new fun videos, projects, and all the awesome art goodness we have coming your way.